In this video of creating checklister, it's another video of going a little back to the Siki editor of creating a new task or editing a new task. At the time, we hadn't implemented the image upload and it's time to fix that issue. So in this video, we will implement our own custom image upload adapter to Siki editor. So currently, as it stands, we have this script in the edit blade of checklists, just enabling editor and that's it. So there is no file upload logic. So if we try to upload some image, it will throw an error. Let's take a look. It doesn't even work, but if we take a look at the network, the error is file repository, no upload adapter. And there's a link to the docs, pretty convenient error message, which says that you need to enable an upload adapter. So here's how it works in Siki editor. To upload the images, you need to have some kind of upload adapter and enable it. What is upload adapter? In the overview section of image upload on the documentation of Siki editor, you can see that there are official upload adapters and they are premium. So you need to pay extra for easy image or Siki finder or maybe others, but you can implement your own adapter. So one of those links is you can also implement your own image upload adapter. And this is exactly what we will do. There's a good documentation on custom image upload adapter and we can almost copy paste the code. So there's a lot of text and I will link that in the description of this video so you can read it all. But basically we will copy and paste the class of my upload adapter JavaScript class and one by one I will explain the parts and we will customize it for Laravel. In short, you need to have two things. You need to have JavaScript class to upload the adapter and then the backend URL to process the image uploads. And in this case, we will use Spotty Media Library, but also in a weird, interesting way. We will get to that. But first, class my upload adapter should be a class that then is included in this part in classic editor as a parameter. You define the class and then you use that class. But one by one, let's create that class inside of the same JavaScript section for now, let's just copy class my upload adapter with these two methods and then we'll add more methods. So here in the script, we define class upload adapter and by default, we don't need to change anything here. Start the upload process. This is the JavaScript magic of Siki editor. And then we add more methods according to the documentation. Again, you can read it all in depth, but I will just copy paste explaining some parts. This is the most important part probably for us, init request method. So to the same class, we add init request method, and this is the URL that should be responsible for the upload. And we need to change that from this to our route of some kind, which doesn't exist yet. So here we'll have, for example, admin dot image upload, something like that. And also to avoid CSRF error, we need to add another parameter of CSRF token. And the syntax for that is I will paste from my notes is set request header. So CSRF token is actually a header of X CSRF token behind the scenes and we pass a new CSRF token. Okay. Next we go through the documentation and almost copy paste the same thing in it listeners. This method is important to get the response URL. So our script, our PHP script Laravel script should return the response in JSON with URL as a part of that. And then some method for upload, which doesn't really matter that much, but we copy and paste that one as well. And we need to change. Actually, we don't need to change, but we need to take care of this part. So response should contain the URL and what else? send request. Of course, that is also important, but also we don't change anything here. It's just a default how JavaScript works with form data. We append the upload file and I guess that's it probably. Now we need to activate our plugin, our class with a few lines of code. First, we need to this create a function which would use that class. So we created a class. Then we, after that class, we create a function that would use our adapter. So let's create a simple upload adapter, for example, simple upload adapter plugin. And then we can add that as a parameter to the actual text area as extra plugin. So something like this here, we need to add a parameter based as an extra plugin. And the name of that plugin is simple upload adapter plugin like this. And that loader is underlined invalid number of arguments expected zero. Probably I forgot the constructor. Let's go back to the documentation and see if there is a constructor for that class. Of course, my upload adapter should have a constructor in JavaScript. 
So that's the problem of copy pasting stuff. You can copy paste from the documentation, but you need to know what you're doing and you need to be able to debug it. So now no errors, at least not visible, nothing underlined and let's try it out. It should throw an error, but this time a different error. Admin image upload is not defined and let's create that route. So first we'll create a controller for that. PHP artisan make controller, admin image controller, for example, which will take care of all the image uploading. And then we use that image controller. Actually, let's open it and create a simple function. For now, it will be empty, but public function store with request as a parameter, HTTP request, and with empty body for now. Let's use it in the routes web here. In the admin route group, we will create route post images, for example kind of like a resource controller, but just with one method. So image controller class, the method is store and the name should be images store. The full name would be admin images store because we have the prefix here, admin dot. And let's try to reference that in our edit blade. Our route name was admin images upload. Let's change that to images store and let's refresh the page. It should not throw that error. Great. No errors here either. And let's try to upload something. Now it should throw 500 as I expect. Yeah, so that's a JavaScript error, but you see down below it's already uploaded, but the error is related to the fact that it doesn't return URL. So in our JS file in edit blade here, it expects response URL to come back. So for now, let's try to fake that with returning response JSON as array of URL, some image URL, for example, totally random example of my URL from Laravel daily blog, old Laravel blog, and that's it. Response JSON should be working. Let's try it out. We refresh, we try to upload and let's see what happens. See the URL comes back with the image. So that's exactly what we need to do. Now let's take care of the actual upload on the back end. On the backend, as I said before, we'll use a package called Spati Media Library. I like it very much. I use it in a lot of projects. And what it does, it allows you to have one line of code to actually upload the file and assign it to a certain record like task ID or page ID or something. We won't actually need to assign that to the ID and we will kind of fake it. So it would be a weird way of using that but it's really simple to install. And for simple image uploads, I really like the Spicy Media Library. So step-by-step, step, let's install that. So Composer requires Spicy Media Library with version nine at this point, or version 9.6 to be exact. What else we need to do? Vendor publish. And then it creates a migration for media table, which uses polymorphic relations. I will show you that in a minute. Perhaps that's it. That's all we need to configure by default. And in our database, we have a new table called media. If we take a look at the structure, it has two things, model type and model ID, which means what that file is attached to. So for example, task ID would be model task and ID of the tasks table. But for now, for our upload, what we need to do in here is just create some kind of object of a model, which would be kind of fake. And in here, in this field, we will have zero value model ID. It's not a physical relationship on the database level from model ID, like foreign key to models or to tasks. It's kind of like a fake relationship polymorphic is. So we can assign zero here. And just bear with me, I will explain that in a minute. So we create a new task, new task, new model, empty then assign that task ID is zero, then fake that task already exists. And then we will assign one line of Spotty Media Library to upload that image and assign to the collection. To do that, in the model of tasks, we need to add a few things related to Media Library. First, implements has media from Spotty Media Library, and then in the use, interacts with media two things, how we prepare the model. Then in the controller, we can use that model object to do one sentence like add media from request. Request like this, request name, key name is upload, 
to media collection and we can call that collection somehow for example images and that upload corresponds to if we add our JavaScript if we take a look at JavaScript this one data append upload and by this point the file should be uploaded to the storage folder or to whatever you specify in config media library and in config file system file in the config and then it should be added to media collection which means it is saved in the database its data then we need to assign that to the file so let's call it image and then instead of that hard-coded URL we need to return image and Spidey Media Library offers some methods, for example, get URL. So let's see if it works, and then I will re-explain it a bit more. Refresh our page, try to upload the file, and it worked. So we have our file, and then we save the task. For example, task test, save the task. And if we go to editing of that task, we have that image. It's already in the database, in the file system, everywhere. Let's take a look exactly how. If we go to our media table and go to the data, refresh that, here's the data. Model type is the name of the model, the eloquent model. Model ID is zero. And then all the other fields are about file names. So screenshot, PNG, size, and other stuff. So basically, it's the media table for any media throughout all the project. And we'll have media for tasks, for checklists, and for pages, or maybe even more in the future. Now, in the file system, that file is in the storage, app, public, and then each file I was testing before that, each file corresponds to its own ID in the media table. So ID one corresponds to the folder. So each file belongs to a folder. Oh, I haven't deleted previous tests, but anyway. So this is the file that was uploaded in storage app public. And you need to run artisan command PHP artisan storage link to make those files public and accessible. And let's try to actually view that task from the user's perspective, let's log out and log in or register as any user. So register as a new user. This one here, task test, we open it up and we see the image. Of course, it doesn't look good because it's too big, but it generally works. So with that in mind, I will re-explain what is happening here. Task is the model assigned to Laravel Media Library, and we can add the media from request and upload it to media collection collection could be images or you can separate the collections here's the collection name in the database you can separate like pages tasks or checklists or something like that but in our case we don't do that we just upload the images then we return that url by spidey media library and that url is caught by that blade file or in fact by javascript in the blade file of upload adapter in Siki editor now let's fix the bug of too big image and we will have conversions. And this is one of the reasons why I like Spidey Media Library. It makes it easy to do thumbnails or conversions as they call them. All you need to do is in your model, which is in our case task, just define a method with the name of so-called conversions. Let's make the name thumb or let's actually leave it as it is. Media should be auto-completed by PHP Storm. And let's just add a width of 600 and nothing else. You can specify more parameters here in the documentation. You can find more of them. But let's just define the thumb. And then in the URL of image controller, we should get the URL with the parameter of conversion name, which is thumb, exactly as we specified that. So we go to our checklist and let's add another task. And let's upload another screenshot. And see, it's smaller, but we save the task and let's see how it looks from user's perspective. So I log in as user again, go to checklist, go to this, and this is smaller now, not in full size, it's 600 pixels width. So for now, I will leave it hard coded as 600 and then with the client, I will test how it should look exactly. And final thing we need to do in this video is implement the same thing in other areas where we have Siki editor. So if we go to resources, resources and find in files of editor, we have editor in checklists edit, in tasks edit and pages edit. So how will we will reuse the same thing? The backend part stays almost the same. The only thing we can change here is remove the request because we don't actually use that variable. And then let's take care of the front end. So here in the checklist edit blade, we need to 
copy and paste that somewhere to be reused by other blade files like tasks edit here or something like that. So let's create a separate file. I thought it could be a JS file like Siki editor JS, but the problem here is that there are blade variables there like routes and CSRF token. So let's create another blade file in resources, views, admin, and let's create a file Siki editor blade PHP, put the script here, put the code from there. And here we have the, let me show you the route here available because it's a blade file, not a JS file. And CSRF token is also available to us. Great. Now in our main app blade, we can include that URL, that blade file somewhere here. So for example, include admin dot editor like this, and it should work. So in edit blade, simple upload adapter plugin should already exist. We will try it out. Actually, let's try it out now. We refresh the page. Siki editor is loading and upload. Does it work? It works. So we didn't break anything in the checklist edit. Now let's try to use the same thing. Create with plugins and tasks. Edit blade like this. So copy it and paste it. And if we go to task edit, this one, it works. And let's try to upload one more image into the same text area and see if it worked. Another image, another screenshot. We save the task. We go to edit again and we have two images. It worked. Great. So this is the way how we can reuse the same plugin for other edit blade tasks. And finally, we need to have it in pages edit blade at the bottom. Copy and paste here. Probably we could refactor even this one somewhere. Or maybe we should add that to the blade file. Hmm. Thinking about it. It's absolutely identical for all of them. So let's try it out actually. Delete that. And then in CK Editor Blade, paste that. So in Pages Edit, there is no script. Or in fact, let's include that here. Admin CK Editor. And we don't need to include that in the app Blade. That would be probably the best idea. So then it would be included here in the scripts only on those pages that is actually required. Let's try it out. Pages edit. We go to pages edit, for example, welcome page. And it seems like it's working. Let's try to upload something on the welcome page. Save page. And if we go to our welcome, it works. Great. So let's remove those edit blade Siki editors from here. And instead, we include admin Siki editor here in the checklist edit blade and in the tasks edit blade, we should do the same. So copy and paste. And not even that, actually, final thing, final experiment, maybe we should load Siki editor only in that include. So by default, it wouldn't be loaded in all the project, only in Siki editor blade. We load the Siki editor on top and then load the script. Let's try it out. Editing the page. Does it work? I think it works. Save something, save page. And then let's see if it worked. It did work. So even refactored on the fly so that CK editor wouldn't be repeated on every page. And it seems to work well. Okay, so this is how pretty hard it is to upload the adapter for CK editor. And it's even harder if you customize it even more. So you can read CK editor documentation for more information or use their premium plugins to make it a bit easier for you. But for now, at least I can upload the latest changes to the server, tell the client that they can manage the pages now.